Hey guys, um, it's me, Maya, as you could probably tell from the channel title. Um, and yeah, today I'm going to kind of show you guys a mixture of all different types of jewelry that I've been making recently. There's necklaces, chains, bracelets, um, these flower things that I've recently discovered how to make and really like. So um, yeah, if you find anything that interests you from what I'm showing you right now, um, you can probably just skip to it in the timestamps of this video. I'm pretty sure I will eventually break up the video into sections. And yeah, that's basically it. Oh, one note, the necklace that I'm showing you right now, I actually won't be showing in the actual video tutorial because by the end of this, I was just really tired. Plus this video is like really long, so. If you guys are interested in learning how to make that, you guys can definitely leave a comment down below, but otherwise I probably just won't because it has elements from other necklaces that I do include in this video, so yeah, if you guys are interested, let me know, but otherwise, um, the other flower necklace in this video is kind of similar, so just watch that and try to recreate the purple one. Um, yeah, let's just get started. First, I'm going to go over some supplies that I use. I do do this in every single video I make, so if you've already watched my videos, no need to watch this section, but otherwise, here they are. So these are the three types of pliers I use. I use flat nose pliers, round nose pliers, and cutters, but really I think the one that I recommend the most is the round nose pliers because those are the most versatile, and then you can always use scissors to cut wire as long as the wire isn't too thick. Next we have the wire that I use. Um, the one that I'm showing you right now is 26 gauge, and then the one to the right is 22 gauge wire. So those are the two gauges that I use in this video. Of course, you could definitely use different sizes, it's just that generally I use a thicker one and then a thinner one to wrap stuff in because it's a lot easier to manipulate. Next we have jump rings. These you can definitely make out of the 22 gauge wire that I showed you earlier, but I just had these lying around so I figured I would use them. These are end of necklace clasps when you make necklaces out of string. I'm not exactly sure what I call them. I'll probably link them down below in the description box or something similar. Um, but yeah, they're really useful and you definitely need them if you're stringing any beads onto string because you can't end the necklace like you would if it was a wire necklace. Oh, and by the way, I'm in a completely different spot. So the voiceover might sound a bit different. Um, I actually moved recently, so that's exciting. And next we have the actual thread to make some of these necklaces that I'm going to show you. Mine is completely non-elastic, but I think it would actually be easier to use elastic strings, so you could definitely get that if you want. Um, to be honest, I have no idea where this is from, it's like five years old, so yeah, I'm pretty sure you can just find them at any craft store. And next we have pearls. Now these are bulk plastic pearls that are so cheap, you can find them anywhere. Um, I definitely don't use real ones, at least for these types of necklaces, because I want to make a lot of them, but I don't want to spend a lot of money on actual pearls, so yeah, just get the plastic ones and then I'll show you how to make them look like real pearls. Next we have seed beads. Um, I'll put the size of the seed beads on the screen, but you can find them basically anywhere. Um, and I use these mainly for making the flowers that I showed you at the beginning of the video. Um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> You'll also need a ruler just to measure the string or the wire because I will be giving you measurements. And lastly, you could have some sort of pendants to hang on the pearl necklaces. Um, I usually get mine off of Amazon. Michael's are, there's the Chinese site called Taobao, um, where you can also get, well, you can't get them if you're in America. If you're in China, you can get them from Taobao. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically it. The first design I'll be showing you guys today is called the Heart Chain. It's actually taken completely from a channel called Lan Ann Handmade. I will link her and her video down below. She makes really amazing wire jewelry designs. Um, I can't even fathom making half of the stuff that she does on her channel, but the heart chain was simple enough, so I just wanted to show it again here because I really liked her design. So this chain is made up of two components. One is the heart and one is the kind of infinity sign looking thing that connects the hearts together. Um, so basically I just make each of them in bulk and then connect them together at the end. For the heart segments, uh, you're going to need to cut two centimeter long strips of wire, and then for the infinity sign segments of the chain, you will need to cut one and a half centimeters length of wire. Now that I have a few segments of each length cut out, I'm going to start by showing you how to make the heart segment of the chain. Um, so the first step is to curl both ends in with your round nose pliers. And this takes a bit of trial and error to figure out how big you want the hole to be. Um, so yeah, just 
be patient with yourself and mess up a few times before you get it right. That's what I did. And eventually you are going to get a segment with two loops on the end. After you have that shape, you're going to find the center in between the two loops, use your round nose pliers, and then bend the shape in half so that you form a heart. I will put the number of heart and infinity sign links you'll need on the screen um, for a choker. I'm not exactly sure how many I'll have to count, but um, it's quite a lot. So yeah, put on some YouTube or podcast and just get making because you'll be there for maybe an hour or two. And then what I like to do right after I'm done forming the actual heart is to squash it a bit using the flat nose pliers. Um, and this is just so that it lies flatter and looks a bit more neat. Now I'm going to show you guys how to make the infinity segments. Again, this is kind of trial and error. You're going to make two loops on either end again, but instead of them both facing up or down, they are going to face in opposite directions to form an infinity loop. Um, and again, this does take trial and error. It took me a few tries before I got the thickness of the loops correctly, uh, meaning like how far along the round nose pliers I would move to make the loop, if that makes sense. And if you do find that the loops you're making are a bit too small to use up the entirety of the 1.5 centimeters, you can always just cut less next time. All right, now that we have our little piles going, you're going to start connecting these different segments of your chain. And this part is pretty simple. Um, you just do heart infinity, heart infinity until you make a thing long enough for whatever you want. Um, so for me, I just open the infinity loop slightly, slip it into the loop created by one side of the heart, close it with my round nose pliers, and then link another heart to the other side of the infinity chain. I guess the one piece of quote unquote advice I would give you for this part is just to make sure that the hearts are all facing the same way, um, because... I don't know, you might be like halfway through and then discover that you've been alternating the direction of the hearts, which might be what you were going for, but if not, um, just make sure that all the hearts are pointing down or something like that. All right, and now I've got sort of a chain going. I measured about six inches. Is that six? I can't tell. Well, you guys can read, so I measured about that length before I stopped. And now I will show you guys how to make connectors if you want to make this into a bracelet or a necklace. Of course, you could definitely just buy uh, hook and eye clasps from the store, but I tend to like making them because they don't tarnish as easily, so that's what I will show you right now. So the first thing you're going to do to make the hook is to make a small loop with the round nose pliers on one end of the wire. Then you're going to take a wider part of the round nose pliers and then make a loop in the opposite direction, um, so it forms kind of a hook-like shape, as you can probably tell from what I'm showing you guys on the screen. I don't know why I'm trying to explain it. Now that you have the main body of your hook, you can use your cutters to cut about a centimeter or two below the original loop that you made. And now with that extra little tail end of the hook, you can just make another loop. You can wrap the excess wire around the stem of the hook a bit if you want to, to make it a bit more secure. Um, or if not, it really doesn't matter. And there's the hook part of your closure. Do be warned, this part does kind of get stuck in your hair sometimes, so um, the store-bought clasps are a bit better in that sense, but I just like to make everything myself, so. And now you can attach the looped end of your hook to the end of your chain, and now I'm going to show you how to make the... Is it called the eye part of the closure? I'm not really sure. The, the loop that the hook goes into, let's just say. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is move about one or two centimeters down the wire, and then make a thick loop with the thick part of your round nose pliers. After that, you can start winding the extra tail um, on the end of your loop around the stem of the wire with your other pair of pliers. After you're done coiling the tail end of the wire around the stem, you can cut off about one to two centimeters after the coil, and then create another smaller loop with your round nose pliers on that end. And then after that, you can either coil the tail around the stem again or just cut off the tail. It doesn't really matter. I probably made this a bit too much work. Um, and then attach it to the other end of whatever you're trying to close, whether it's a bracelet or a necklace. All right, and that's basically it. Um, just one note, you definitely could just make a jump ring out of your wire instead of doing the whole like coil, stem, tail thing that I just did. Um, I was just being extra, but you can definitely just make a jump ring out of your wire. Alright, now I'm going to show you guys how to make a heart and pearl chain, which is basically a variation on the heart chain that I showed you guys earlier, except we're going to put pearls in between the hearts. 
So your first step, similarly to when we were making a heart chain, is to cut two centimeter long pieces of wire to make the actual hearts. Um, and you can just do this in bulk at the beginning so you don't have to keep on going back and cutting. After you've cut um, enough of the heart wire segments, um, you can basically take the pearls and then start making the pearls with two loops on either end. I'll show you guys in a second. Once you have your pearl bead, you can slide it onto the piece of wire and then create a small loop using the round nose pliers on one end of the wire. After you're done with that, you can cut about one centimeter or less beyond the pearl with your cutters um, and then create another loop on the other side with your round nose pliers again. You can definitely experiment with the length of the wire that you cut after the pearl. Um, I just kind of eyeball it and then I figured out a way that works, but uh, make sure you guys experiment to see what works for you. Um, yeah, and that's one segment done. And then you'll basically just keep on doing this and then putting the hearts in between each of the pearls to create the actual chain. To connect them, I think I either like open back up the loop on one of the sides of the pearls or I open up the loop in the heart. I think I might actually do the pearls because that's a bit easier to open up. Um, so yeah, just open up one of the loops on one of the sides of the pearls and then slide the heart in um, and then close it again with your pliers. And now we've got a start to our chain. Um, again, as with the previous necklace, you can definitely use the eye and hook, hook and eye, yeah, hook and eye closure um, to close off the necklace. Um, again, this does tangle with your hair, so you could use the store-bought ones, but I prefer to make everything myself, as I said before. And yeah, that's basically how you make this necklace. And now I will be showing you guys how to make a paper clip chain. Um, this one was actually from my original wire making jewelry video. Wire wire jewelry making video, um, excuse me, but I actually didn't show it in the video because it's quite flimsy and easy to break, um, but I guess I'll show it to you guys this time if you really want to learn. Um, but again, it is pretty easy to break, so I'm not sure how much I would recommend making it. I do wear it sometimes, but again, like I don't think you can really hang pendants on it because it can't take much weight. Um, maybe one of you guys can come up with a design that holds more weight, but for now, this is just what I had in the thumbnail of that video, so this is what I'll show you. Um, the first thing you're going to do is cut segments of this length. I'm not sure what it is at this moment, so I'll put it on the screen. Um, but you're going to cut segments, I think maybe of three centimeters, um, in bulk, just so that you don't have to keep on cutting later on. Once you have your segments in bulk, you're going to start folding them in half on about the middle part of the round nose pliers, so that it forms like kind of a, a U-shape. Yeah, um, I guess you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And then what you'll do is take the round nose pliers and bend a bit of the top towards each other so that it creates a full loop. And then as you continue making the segments, you can definitely join them together. Um, and this is where you will see that this chain is quite flimsy. Um, you could actually try putting like a little dot of hot glue to try and seal um, the place where the two ends meet because that place isn't secure at all. They don't like actually attach via any method um, Which is why this chain is so easily breakable But if you guys want to experiment you can like put a drop of hot glue or some other type of glue there to try and seal it and see if that works and if it does definitely let me know in the comments because um, I do want to eventually make this into an actual wearable thing, but so far my design isn't very wearable And here is the entire chain um, again, I just use the hook and eye closure for that, but you can use any closure. And the loops on the chain are actually big enough so that you don't have to create an eye part of the closure. You can just hook the hook onto any part of the necklace to increase or decrease its length. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Now I will show you guys how to make a pearl and daisy chain. Um, this one I actually really liked the design of, so I hope you guys enjoy. Like before with the pearls, you're going to slide the pearl onto the piece of wire, create a loop with that end of the wire, cut about one or less centimeters beyond the pearl, and then create another loop with that end of the wire um, just to create the pearl segments. I showed this earlier in more detail. Go to the pearl and heart chain if you want to know more about it. Um, okay, so after we have the pearl segments, you just are going to connect a lot of them and then you guys are going to make the flower segments. And this part is slightly more complicated, um, so I will show it to you in a bit more detail. To make the daisies, you're going to start with your 26 or 28 gauge wire, so the much thinner wire, and then you're going to slide seven of the petal colored beads, um, in this case they're green, onto that piece of wire. 
After all seven are on the wire, you're going to loop the end of the wire through the last bead and pull it tight so it creates a circle. This part is kind of hard to explain, so you should be able to tell what I'm doing from the screen. Now that we have all seven beads on the wire, we're going to start getting the middle bead there. So um, the first thing you're going to do is loop the long end of the wire underneath and in between um, the petals of the original flower. So you're going to split them like three to four um, because there's an odd number of petals. There's a total of seven. And then after you're done with that, you're going to get your middle colored bead, in this case I'm using white, and you're going to string it onto the long end of the wire and let it fall all the way until it reaches the middle of the flower. After you push it into the center of the flower, you're going to start securing it by weaving that end of the wire through one of the petal beads on the opposite side from where it came from. Um, this is very hard to explain, I hope I'm doing it justice, um, and you can definitely look at the video if you can to try and figure out what I'm doing. You'll probably need your flat nose pliers to pull the entire wire through the outer bead, um, so you can do that if you want. And then your flower charm is basically all complete. Now what I'm going to do is to create loops on either end so that I can connect them with the pearl segments. Um, and you just do that like with any other wire. It's slightly harder with a thinner wire, but basically just create a loop um, with your round nose pliers and then wind the extra tail of the wire around the stem of the loop just for some extra security. And now I'm just opening up one side of the pearl segment um, in order to slide the flower onto the necklace. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and yeah, the way I organized this necklace is that I did about half of the necklace as pearl segments, and then I started um, incorporating the daisies in, and I think I alternated them with pearls as well. And then after maybe like seven daisies, I'm not exactly sure how many there are, I stopped and continued the rest of the necklace as just pearls. Alrighty, so now I'm going to show you guys how to make a pearl choker. This is a much more traditional sort of necklace that's not made out of wire for once in my life. Um, yeah, this wire, this necklace, not this wire, this necklace basically uses string, some necklace clasps, pearls, seed beads, and then a pendant if you want. I personally actually don't keep the pendant on the necklace, but I thought I would include it just for the sake of this video. So your first step is to cut a piece of string. I would recommend 18 inches at least because you will have to tie knots at the ends. Um, depending on the length of your necklace, I would add maybe like 5 inches just to be safe. Not 5 inches, that's a bit much, like 3 inches just to be safe so you can tie knots. Now that you have your cut string, you're going to start tying knots on one end. Um, try to concentrate the knots into like one bulky knot, if you get what I mean, like tie multiple knots but tie them on top of each other so that the like overall knot is kind of thick. Um, and that way it's going to hold in place the necklace clasp that we're going to string onto the necklace later. This string is actually a bit tough to work with, so I use my pliers to pull the knots tight um, and to try and concentrate the knots into one place. After you've got your bulky knot, you're going to cut off most of the excess string so that there's only maybe like a quarter of a centimeter left. And then you're going to string your necklace clasp onto the string, but open side facing the knot so you can clamp it down on the knot. After your clamp is located around the knot, you're going to pinch it down with your pliers. I usually use my pliers for maximum effect. Um, and then, yeah, that's basically one end of your necklace done. The clamps usually have holes on the other side so you can string like a jump ring or a hook closure or anything like that onto the necklace. Now we're going to start the process of stringing our beads onto the necklace. So I'm going to just follow a very simple pattern, very self-explanatory. I'm just threading on one seed bead, followed by a pearl, followed by another seed bead, and then a pearl, and then keep on going. I find that if you just string really cheap pearls onto a flimsy necklace, they'll kind of bunch up and not lie very flat, um, which doesn't look that flattering. Maybe I'll insert some b-roll here. But yeah, usually if I try to do that, it doesn't work that great with fake pearls. So instead what I do is I separate each of the pearls with a seed bead, which helps them lie against each other much better. This is also a way that you can incorporate some color into your necklace. I just used light pink seed beads, but you can also use blue. I think that would look really great. You can use green, basically any color. You can do rainbow too. 
since I've already made myself a pearl necklace, I'm going to stop it here and turn this into a bracelet. Um, so once you've decided that that's enough beads and you've had enough, um, you can chop off a bit of the excess, um, leave about three inches or more so that you can still tie knots, um, and then you're going to thread on the necklace clamp onto the other side. But make sure that the necklace clamp is facing outward so that it can like hug the knot that you are going to tie. All right, this part is a bit tricky, so you gotta be patient with it. Um, but, but what you're going to do is basically tie three knots, one on top of each other, so that they fit perfectly into the end of necklace clamp, or in this case, bracelet, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then once you tie those three knots on top of each other, you're going to use your pliers to pinch close the clamp, um, make sure that it's really tight so it doesn't unravel, and then you basically have two ends of your bracelet or necklace that are fully clamped and ready to have the hook and eye closure attached to it. And here's just video of me creating the hook and eye closure really quickly. Um, this was definitely shown earlier in the video, so I don't want to repeat for fear of making this video too long. Um, so if you do want to, I'll put the timestamp on the screen so that you guys can travel back in case you still want to learn how to make the hook and eye closure. And here is the completed bracelet. Um, I know that the hook and eye closure is kind of an eyesore, so just make sure it's on like the bottom side of your wrist so no one ever sees it. And you can definitely also make the hook and eye closure a bit smaller to minimize the space that doesn't have pearls. And then if you would like to attach a pendant, you can definitely just create a jump ring using the fat side of your round nose pliers. Um, just coil the wire around a few times to make multiple jump rings, and then open the jump ring, slide the pendant on, and then just slide it on the bracelet. Now I will be showing you guys how to make a half and half necklace. I've seen these all over Pinterest. Um, I haven't really seen people wearing them around, but they're on Pinterest, so they must be aesthetic and popular. Um, so yeah, this is basically what it looks like. Half of it is this sort of chain that I made, and then half of it is the pearl necklace that you saw earlier. So the first thing we're going to do is cut a lot of these segments in bulk, like we did last time, to make the links for the chain. Just for reference, I'm making all of the wire segments 3 centimeters long, but you can definitely lengthen it or shorten it depending on how big you want the chains to be. Once you have a few wire segments cut, you are going to start making the actual links to the chain. So the first thing you're going to do is bend the wire in half around the thicker end of the round nose pliers. After you're done with that, you're going to create two loops facing the same direction outwards, perpendicular to the like U shape if that makes any sense. You guys can probably see what I'm doing online um, on the video, hopefully. Um, after you're done making those two loops, you're going to pinch them together with your flat nose pliers um, so that they meet in the middle and then you have the U. The tutorial for this type of chain was also in my very first wire making, wire jewelry making video. So you guys can also reference that if you need more help. After you're done with one segment, you're going to create a U with another piece of wire. But before you create the loops, you're going to thread it into the loops made on the previous segment of wire so that the U is kind of lined up. And now you can create the loops that are facing in the same direction and pinch them together and close off the link. And then once you're done with about half a length of a necklace, depending on if you wanted it as a choker or slightly longer necklace, you can end the chain there and then start on the pearl side of the necklace. Now I'm going to show you guys how to make the pearl side of the necklace. So using the chain that you just completed, you're going to measure out double that of string and then add like four inches on the end um, just so that you can tie knots. And we cut off twice the amount of string that we actually needed for the length of necklace because we're going to double up the string um, so that we can thread it through one of the last links on the chain side of the necklace. And once you guys have the doubled up string attached to the chain side of the necklace, you guys are going to start threading seed beads and pearl beads in the same pattern as I showed you last time onto the string. Once the chain side of your necklace and the pearl side of your necklace are mostly the same length, you can stop threading beads on and instead thread on a necklace clamp that we used in the previous tutorial. Um, this will basically serve as the end to the string because with string you can't really just loop it and then create an end clasp. You need some sort of necklace clasp to clamp on the end of the string. Once you have your clamp on, you're going to start tying the two ends of strings together um, in order to create the knot that the clamp can like hug, clamp around, that kind of stuff, if you get what I mean. Um, 
And yeah, basically just tie as many knots as you can um, that would still fit in the clamp because you want this to be as secure as possible. Once you're done tying your knots, you can cut off any excess with your scissors and then use your flat nose pliers to clamp the necklace clamp around the knot that you just made. And there you have it. Now all you have to do is attach a hook and eye closure to either end of the necklace, it doesn't really matter what end, um, and your necklace is completed. You can also add a pendant um, at the place where the pearl side and chain side meet. Um, I usually think that looks pretty good because it makes the necklace more of a v-shape which I think works with a half and half necklace but that is all up to you. Alrighty that concludes this extremely long video. My voice is completely shot. Um, I also filmed and edited this and edited this video um, while I was moving for the summer um, so that's probably why it sounds a bit disjointed but please ignore that. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something new. Um, I really like these designs. I just want to put a disclaimer here that they are not technically mine. I'm sure most of them are just pretty generic, anything you can find on Pinterest. And then, yeah, some of them are just inspired by Pinterest. So um, you guys can definitely recreate them, sell them, do whatever. I will let you guys know if a design is like mostly mine and I don't want people replicating that, but I don't think that will be the case most of the time because again, all of these are pretty generic and I'm just showing you guys how to make them out of wire, which is my preferred medium for making jewelry. Um, and yeah, I'm also going to show you guys in the next video how to make the rings I'm making. A bit of a teaser. Yes, I planned that. And yes, that was um, premeditated. So here are some more of my rings. Um, at this point, I'm just showing off a bit. But I really liked these ring designs. And I will definitely show you guys these in the next video. And yeah, I think that's basically all I had to say. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. Please definitely send me your creations on Instagram. I love to see what everyone made. Um, I think my Instagram's just it's a wild Maya, same as YouTube. Um, and I've talked enough, so that will be it for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.